Hi everyone, Moms Against Medical Bullying. So I can go live. Um, I just can't go live from a mobile. That's the new rule on YouTube. If you uh, have less than a thousand um, YouTube subscribers, you can only go live on a computer, I think, or a tablet, but you can't go live on a mobile. So, um, I found another good book that I need to start reading, um, and I just wanted to share it because, um, and actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to link it in this video, but there's so many good books, and I'm still reading Charles Creighton's book, um, back, um, Gender and Vaccination, A Strange Time in Medical History. Still, gosh, what chapter am I on? Like nine or something. And I wonder how long I have to go. But I haven't been um, updating on that book because, I don't know, I just haven't felt led to read anything specific because right now I'm going through the chapters of how um, vaccination was um, widely accepted even in like Germany, you know, he's going through like how it was accepted in different countries. Um, despite it being wrong. Um, and it's just interesting to see how quick these men were ready to, you know, take this practice on as if it was the gospel truth, you know, and, um, it's what I'm realizing. I mean, what I've realized is, is really, it's all about business, 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 business. It's a business. Everything is a business. Um, and before, I mean, just like this book here is going to suggest that Pastor was a fraud. Um, Jenner was not, you know, this idea, he stole this idea, right? Inoculation was already a thing by the time that Jenner presented this whole vaccination thing. Vaca means cow, from the cow. So um, that's where they get the word vaccination. Um, but inoculation was already going on. And imagine how those doctors or whoever people who were doing inoculation, how they felt when vaccination came on the scene. Like, uh-oh, we got competition, right? Can't. Anywho, so that's where I'm at in that book. And it's just, I really have to sit down and concentrate because of the, the different language used in, in that time period, a different English. So the book I am starting to, another book I'm just starting to dab into is called Beauchamp or Pasteur, A Lost Chapter in the History of Biology by Ethel Douglas Hume, prefaced by... Pasteur, Plagiarist Imposter, The Germ Theory Exploded by R.B. Pearson. So those are, it's like two books in one. And the part that I just wanted to read a snippet of is where, about Florence Nightingale. Because I've heard a little bit about her, um, and I just wanted to read a section here about what she did. There's wasps out. Um, yeah, apparently the whole idea that Pasteur presented was already um, being talked about by, uh, what's this guy's name? Geronimo Frescatorio. So many names. Gosh, once you start to get reading these books, you realize it's like name after name after name. People. So many people. <laughs> but anyway, I just try to glean what I can. Um, let's say it's this book says here, um, it was widely known that it was widely known is indicated by the fact that the world famous English nurse. Actually, let me let me back up a little bit. Um, yeah, I'll just start there. Widely known is indicated by the fact that the world famous English nurse Florence Nightingale published an attack 
on the idea, the idea of this germ theory, in 1860, over 17 years before Pasteur adopted it and claimed it as his own. Diseases are not individuals arranged in classes like cats and dogs, but conditions growing out of one another, Florence Nightingale says. Is it not living in a continual mistake to look upon diseases as we do now, excuse me, <clears throat> as separate entities which must exist, like cats and dogs, instead of looking upon them as conditions, like a dirty and clean condition, and just as much under our control, or rather as the reaction of kindly nature against the conditions in which we have placed ourselves. I was brought up to believe that smallpox, for instance, was a thing of which there was once a first specimen in the world, which went on propagating itself in a perpetual chain of descent, just as there was a first dog or a first pair of dogs, and that smallpox would not begin its, it by itself any more than a new dog would begin without there having been parent dog. Since then, I have seen with my own eyes and smelled with my own nose smallpox growing up in first specimens, either in closed rooms or in overcrowded wards, where it could not by any possibility have been caught, but must have begun there. I have seen diseases begin, grow up, and turn into one another. Now, dogs do not turn into cats. I have seen, for instance, with a little overcrowding, continued fever grow up, and with a little more, typhoid fever, and with a little more, typhus, and all in the same ward or hut. Would it not be far better, truer, and more practical if we looked upon disease in, in this light for diseases, as all experience shows, are adjectives, not noun substanti substantiatives. True nursing ignores infection except to prevent it. Cleanliness and fresh air from open windows with unremitting attention to the patient are the only defense a true nurse either asks or needs. Wise and humane management of the patient is the best safeguard against infection. The greater part of nursing consists of preserving cleanliness. The specific disease doctrine is the grand refuge of weak, uncultured, unstable minds, such as now rule in the medical profession. There are no specific diseases. There are specific disease conditions. Have you... Have... You, here you have Florence Nightingale, the most famous nurse in history, after lifelong experience with infection, contagion, and epidemics, challenging the germ theory. Seventeen years before Pasteur put it forward as his own discovery, in, in which it wasn't, she clearly understood it and its utter fallacy better before 1860 than Pasteur did, either in 1878 or later. Now to see what a parasite Pasteur was on men who did things, let us digress and go back a few years to the time when the study of germs was an outgrowth of the study of fermentation. So, that's what, kind of where I left off. I started reading about fermentation. Um, so, whew, there's so much stuff to read. I wish that my mind could, you know, really grasp more, but you know, Little by little, um, we learn little by little, you know, plus the fact if you're busy doing other things. So I find that I focus better in understanding and grasping, like, in the morning. That's my, like, time. Looking up at the sky because they're spraying, spraying, spraying these disgusting things that are not clouds. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Anywho, so um, another thing that I didn't think of um, was 
um, how like in the springtime now they're gonna start spraying the parks with like pesticides and stuff or weed killing weed killer. Um, and so then I thought this morning, well, why don't I call the Department of Parks and Recreation and, and just you know inquire about it, like. So the guy um, told me that they hadn't sprayed yet. Now there's two planes. <laughs> they hadn't sprayed yet, but they probably will do it like in May or something like that. I don't know. I just was at, picking his brain, asking him some questions about what they use and everything like that. Um, what else? And then today I got to speak to a nice woman at this embroidery shop. Um, she was super nice. And it's always nice when you can find agreement with somebody. It's a nice feeling. I think even God agrees. You know, it just reminds me of when I don't, I don't remember what exact scripture it was or whatever, but I just feel like, you know, he's the spirit is looking, you know, searching for who can, you know, he can find agreement with, you know, where to rest. And it's nice when you can find agreement with people and people understand what you're talking about. Um, and you share the same kind of common sense. Um, and then on, on the flip side of that, there's people who, <laughs> you know, who don't agree. Like I was talking to one, I felt really compelled the other day to speak to this one couple that was at the park with a child. And, um, you know, I thought maybe that they would understand what I was saying or like receive what I was going to tell them, you know, about vaccines being dangerous um, and unsafe. But the woman was a, is a vaccine believer. She held her hand over her chest and said, I believe in vaccines, you know, and, but the, the boyfriend or husband or the child's father, um, he had a more open demeanor and was almost seemed thankful to hear. And, you know, maybe it confirmed something that he was questioning inside of himself. So I don't know. All I know is I talk to whoever I feel compelled to talk to. You know what I'm saying? I don't talk to everyone. You can't just talk to everyone. You can't, you have to not conserve, but you have to be wise about, you know. So if I feel compelled or strongly compelled to speak to someone, I do it. Um, and it's not hard to do because you just, the word compelled, you just do it. You just go for it. Um, so, uh, you know, sometimes it's the people who act like, like I was trying to share with her, like, you know, what's in vaccines and, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We know what's, we know all about, like kind of that was like her attitude. And you know what? It's fine because she doesn't know me. I don't know her. I just felt compare, compelled to share with them. And sometimes the people who seem like they don't care about what you're saying or whatever they're not receiving, sometimes it's those people that you do plant a seed and, and they do kind of try to investigate what, what you're saying. So um, anyway, take care. I just wanted to share that book. I will try to link it below. It's called The Champ or Pastor. A, what was the full title again? A Lost Chapter in the History of Biology by Ethel Douglas Hume. That'll be my, you know, another book that I'm kind of reading. Let's see. So bright I could barely see the computer. All right. Take care, people.